Hello everyone and welcome to Discussions with the Superintendent. Today, for our topic, we are taking time out to talk about the upcoming 3-8 through state testing. We recently met with the community uh, to talk about uh, opting in uh, this year with regard to 3-8 through testing. Dr. Joseph Syracuse and I met and shared with the community uh, reasons and benefits that we believe uh, are associated with taking this year's 3-8 through test. So uh, tonight we're just going to talk a little bit about the upcoming testing uh, uh, season that's going to happen in just a couple weeks. And uh, so just to kind of um, go through a little bit here, as we uh, talk tonight, we're going to talk about, uh, talk about really having kids opt in this year because there's a lot of things that we'd like to uh, you know, uh, get out of our test. We'll talk about changes to the assessments that have occurred and then have some open discussion around uh, the assessment side. And, and this is really meant to be a discussion. And so at any point, you know, uh, feel free to kind of uh, ask questions and, and just kind of, we're here to interact with one another and talk about uh, testing for this year, basically. So um, this year, there have been a lot of, you know, there's been lots of talk around the assessments. Uh, a little bit different from last year and the last couple of years, uh, because there's been really a lot of changes that have occurred uh, around the assessments. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we move through uh, tonight. But first we want to start with why test kids? You know, why, why should we um, participate in that type of a process? Um, since 1852 is, the, I think, the last date that I had read, uh, we've had tests uh, in this country and in every other country, you know, and every year kids have participated in uh, cumulative tests. Uh, and what they do for us uh, is really provide information uh, and a nice bunch of information about how students are doing. Uh, and this year we're asking our folks from the community to really participate in assessments because we know, first of all, they allow us to look at longitudinal growth. We can see how kids have done over a period of time, not just how they've done in a month or two months, really throughout the entire uh, school year. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure, sure yeah. We um, actually have uh, some K-5 ELA and math coordinators who really get a chance to interrogate that data. We always talk about multiple measures. You know, um, no one test can fully measure a student's aptitude. But what an external test like the state test does for us is it, it kind of holds us accountable to this, the rigor that the state has envisioned with the standard and gives us a lot of good information, both how individual and small groups of students are doing, but also how we're doing programmatically. You know, which standards are we doing well on, which standards are we not doing well on. We look at it um, in, in recent years with the new tests, our achievement rates have, are far from what our standard is as a district. Um, but that doesn't mean that that information isn't useful to us. We see how we're doing compared to other, compared to other uh, school districts. Um, we see how our children are doing compared to each other and then how they progress. So it really helps to drive instruction. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And program. So, you know, we're, we're this year we're looking at a couple of different programs in ELA and math, and we're, we're uh, closely monitoring how our students are doing with our local assessments, and we're looking forward to seeing how different pockets of kids do well in the state assessments to, to see if we can see some achievement differences there based on the programs that we So we get a chance to really look at growth, you know, how kids are doing from the time they started with us to the end, uh, the end of the year, basically. But second of all, what the data does for us is it helps us to identify kids who really need some, some uh, supports, um, and we get to see what are the different needs uh, for our students, and then identify gaps in instruction and in curriculum. So it gives us a chance to really look at if there are some gaps that are happening with our students. Uh, when we get that data back, we can see, you know, by grade level, uh, by class even, you know, where some gaps might be and, and be able to get in and support kids uh, so that kids, at the end of the day, will be able to, to reach their greatest potential, basically. Uh, and then the, the next piece is just, it also gives us a chance to, to look at comparative data too. You know, we look at what are the norms, uh, what are the average scores, the median, and then kind of really it gives us a chance to, to look at how we're doing compared not only to ourselves, but to other districts as well. So I don't, I don't want to go without No, that's good. Um, go ahead. So we kind of talked about, um, one, the one thing I want to stress on this slide is 
we use the New York State assessments as one of multiple measures. It's, it's, it's an indicator that kids might be ready for some advanced studies. It's not the only indicator. This is the first year that we're offering acceleration at sixth grade. I can tell you that when we look at those fifth grade students to see who might benefit from acceleration in fifth, and Mrs. Farley is a part of this process and can attest, we look at their ELA and math state scores along with their scores on computerized tests, their scores on local measures, their work ethic in the classroom, um, you know, how interested they appear to be in the subject area, how dedicated they appear to be. But it is one indicator. Oftentimes, we'll have a kid spike, get a three or a four on the state assessment out of four, and maybe they're not demonstrating in other ways. So it's, it's, it's a very good indicator uh, of how kids are and what they're, what they're ready for, far from the only indicator. We also use it to identify areas for staff development. We, um, we, we've been looking at main idea, we've been looking at supporting details, claim and evidence, um, based on how our kids do on the state test and then, and then on some of our uh, local tests that we call interim tests that are closely connected to the standards and the rigor of the state test. We have to give the tests um, by state and federal guidelines, but we also think these tests are important for our program and for our kids. So it's not just about complying with educational law, um, but it is important that we do. So we also discuss some changes this year to uh, this year's uh, three through eight assessments. A couple of highlights include fewer passages for students to respond to, shorter exams, and also no time limits on any of the exams, uh, which, by the way, we hope will lessen anxiety, test anxiety for all of our students. So there have been some changes this year that the, the <coughs> state has made uh, around the test. And really, over the last couple of years, there's been a lot of concern around how the test have actually been produced, uh, what's the content of the exams, and then the time that's included with the exams, and then who made them. And so in response to all of those concerns, we have a new commissioner, Commissioner Evia, who has been with us now for about a year, and uh, she has really spent a lot of time listening across the state. Uh, there was a recent survey that was completed uh, across the state where she asked people to really get feedback from, from all different stakeholder groups. And then she's been to you know, so many different regions across the state to really just sit and listen. And in doing so, she's really um, heard some of the concerns that are out there. Also the governor. Uh, there were some, a lot of challenges over the last couple of years. We know that the approach that I think he used probably wasn't the best approach. I'm sure it wasn't the best <laughs> approach. We all think that. Uh, and I think he's also spent a lot of time this year listening and has asked that we really relook at this whole testing process. And so there are some things that are different around this year's testing cycle uh, from last year. And here's some of the differences. So on day one, uh, for ELA assessments, we'll just start with ELA. Uh, you know, for grades three and four on day one, in the last school year, they had five reading passages. This year, they will only have four reading passages. Uh, they had 30 multiple choice questions, and this year, the test will have 24 multiple choice questions. On day two, uh, typically there was a uh, two-point, there were three two-point constructed responses that needed to be done. And this year, there will be only two as compared to three. Uh, for grades five through eight in terms of ELA, on day one, uh, there were six reading passages last year, there'll be five. Uh, and then there were 42 multiple choice questions for five through eight ELA test. This year, there'll be 35. Uh, and then, in terms of constructive response, they're going from three uh, on day two to two uh, at this school year. So you can see already with the ELA exam uh, that there has been, uh, for grades three through eight, some significant changes to the construction uh, of the test in, in terms of what's, how much is in the test. Let's, let's go to math now. What happened on day three? There's, there's still the extended response and constructive response is still the same. Right. They still have the essays on day two as well. So, so it's all on day and one. Those were just two. the changes. 
Oh, okay. I thought maybe they got rid of day three. Oh, wasn't that hoping? How's the timing on it? Do they still have the same amount of time? or? So the timing, and we'll certainly get into this in a minute, uh, in the past they had time test. There is no time at all now. So the whole time test piece it, is gone away, basically. So it'll be significantly different. Yeah. And we'll, you know, we know some kids struggled with the exams because the time. You know, they try to beat the clock and get it all in. And, and we know that's not the best way to test kids. So there won't be any time on the test. That's especially significant because you know we're in the <laughs> LA classes and content areas where we're asking the kids to take your time, closely read, go back and reread, um, use your metacognition skills, you know, monitor your understanding as you're going, and then they get to the test and, and they feel yeah. very that's pressured. Great. So the reduction in the reading passages are significant. You know, when you think about five to four, that's a 20% reduction. And then I think just, maybe just the removal of the time factor is gonna allow kids to just relax and, and do your best work. Now what are you gonna do with the kids that have finished when you have the other ones? Guidance is coming out. Um, the reading is, you know, we'll give them some things to do. There's gonna be some guidance from the state. I think uh, what I envision is we'll have a minimum time period and then we'll have a transition period where when kids finish, we'll be able to, to kind of transition them out and kids who want to take more time with it will have, will have to logistically manage that. <laughs> We're talking about it. No, I know. And then there's going to be bathroom breaks. And <laughs> well, we will do that, yeah. There always are those, especially... You know. Well, when it's not in time, then you can see that mm -hmm. stretching out a little bit more. Again, you know, it'll be, it'll be different, but at the end of the day, the goal is, you know, if kids need more time, this, this gives them the opportunity. So, uh, you know, yeah, you're right. There may be those bathroom breaks. There may be you know, kids who get done before the others. But, but the, for those students who really need extra time, yeah. it's nice. They'll be able to, to, to really do it without all the stress. Michelle, you look like you want to add something. Did you want to add something? Well, I was going to say else? we often do that in the classroom um, now. You know, we, get, we don't time students. Like when we take a math test, it's what you need. And, and it works out. And it works out. Yeah. And teachers pretty much know who's going to take a lot longer we do. than others. And you know, and, and we benchmark as we, you know, because we take our little, our, we call them our little checkpoints throughout the year. So that also gives us some idea of who's struggling. Right. And it just needs that time. Not even not that they're struggling. It's just they're taking their time to get it done. Right. For you know, our students, especially our students with disabilities who need extra extended time. You know, uh, time is always of concern. But what we found is really not just some of our kids with disabilities, but some of our kids who don't have disabilities, they just need more time. So this will, these changes will be really great for all kids. They really will be. So, so in math, if you want to go Sure, through. math, the changes are a little, a little more subtle. Um, you can see in math across the board, there are fewer multiple choice questions. So in, in grades three through five on day one, there'll be two fewer multiple choice questions. That is significant because a lot of our multiple choice questions are uh, deal with longer uh, two, three, four sentences of setup to get to the question. So, I mean, two multiple choice questions might not sound like a lot, but it's I think it's fairly significant um, given the types of multiple choice questions we, we've been seeing. In grades uh, four and five on day two, there's a two question reduction, and then in grade six through eight on both day, uh, day one, there's a two from 28 questions to 26, and then from 27 questions to 25. So a few, or mul a few fewer multiple choice questions for the kids. So another really uh, big change that's occurred this year that I'm extremely excited about is the amount of teacher input in creating this year's exams. Now in terms of the makeup of, of the test, this year they've done a lot different from in the past. Uh, there has in the past been some uh, input from educators, but not to the extent that they have this year. Uh, this year they had 156 educators who helped to create a new test. Uh, so a lot of teacher input, a lot of teacher involvement, uh, more, considerably more than what has been done in the past. And we know teachers know their kids. You know, they're teaching them every day. So being able to have teacher input is a real plus. Uh, Field testing. Uh, there has been less field tests uh, this year, a significant reduction. 
Uh, you know, in the past, kids were doing field tests plus the state test plus the test they were doing. So there's been a lot less. So so kids will really basically be ready for that main test at the end of the year. There's a lot less tests now happening. Shorter exams. Uh, all the exams will have less questions as we just kind of went through. Uh, and then more time. There's nothing's timed anymore. Uh, and then there'll be some schools that will be doing computer-based testing. Uh, so for example, two of our schools, OE and Freeway, will participate in computer-based exams. Uh, you should know that many of our, our kids today um, actually are using, all of our kids who, are, who qualify are using uh, STAR exams uh, online, so they, they're already used to computer-based testing. And so this helps to stay consistent with what's been done before. So we'll be doing some field tests this year. Those that will do some of the tests will be using the computer-based testing, which is what many of them are already used to doing, basically. Just to be very clear about the, um, the test this year, there's a lot of discussion about Pearson. What, Pearson is the creator of the test. They still have the contract. The tests take two to three years to create. So it's true that Pearson, the, the previous publisher of the test, still wrote all the questions and field tested all the questions. But as Dr. Calvin mentioned, we had educators now screening uh, those field test questions and selecting the ones for inclusion. Because some of the issues with the past exams were um, ambiguous choices, multiple correct choices, missing page numbers, uh, translations that were inaccurate. So having the teachers review not only the questions but give input on the format of the test um, allows us to do, as, as Dr. Calvin said, have people who understand kids in the teaching and learning process and, and um, have input on what makes it, what would be a good question. So the field test is one piece, and we're not going to ever be done with field testing. We've reduced it considerably, but the teacher input, I think, is a, a very big difference. Of course, time will tell when we're, what the test exactly will look like, but I am very um, positive in terms of what I think is going to, the product we're going to see for our kids. Um, so those are some of the changes that are, have been occurring, uh, that are have, that have occurred rather, and uh, it will be really a much, I think, different year than what has happened uh, basically in the past. Uh, you know, again, a lot more teacher involvement, a lot less questions, uh, no timing uh, pieces to it, uh, and and the content will just be different. I think the other thing that we should know is that you know across the state. Um, how these tests are being used is going to be different too. Uh, in the past, they were used for, you know, we, once kids took the test, uh, information was put into student records. They were used also, we know, for evaluations of staff. The whole evaluation of staff piece has, has really been put on hold. Uh, the, the new legislation that's out there has, has said, you know, this is not going to be used for teachers' um, evaluations, it's not being used for principal evaluations, uh, not being used you know, uh, in, in those ways. Uh, in fact, for students, uh, this does not become a part of their permanent record. So truly, it's being used at this time for really, to, for us to know how kids are growing. Uh, and, and with all the work that we've done, um, our staff has done with and for our kids, it gives us the chance to really see, you know, the, the out, outcomes of what kids have been taught throughout the year. Uh, and what we can do with and for our kids. I wish we would have started in this way across the state, but we're here now. So it's a great opportunity for us to, to get kind of back on track and really keep our eyes and ears on what's happening with and for kids, basically. Uh, so with that said, I think at this point now, we've shared some of the changes, questions or thoughts or feedback that people might have. Uh, we'll, take, we'll, we'll do a little question and answer and do some uh, discussion. Any questions out there at all? Thoughts? You know, I read on our, we got a weekly uh, thing from the School Board Association, mm -hmm. and it was uh, Commissioner Ilya was talking about, um, and I think I read this right, that if, if it said, um, at the Regents' February meeting, the board pondered a potential impact if New York students continue to opt out of state testing in large numbers this spring um, because it could help it could possibly withhold funding right. from our school. Um, and in light of what our district's going through, 
that that could be mm -hmm. a real problem. Right. Um, and I know she's saying that she doesn't think it should be that way, but I don't know if you've heard anything about when right. we're going to decide that. Or so kind of like what Joe was sharing earlier, you know, test taking of exams, there are legal, uh, there, there are laws that say, hey, you have to take exams. And uh, some of those laws that we have that are written basically say, you know, you have to have a certain uh, participation rate. 95. Uh, you have to have 95% uh, of your student body participating in state exams. And so when you don't have the 95% in place, um, there can be um, action taken whereby um, funds can be withheld from a school district. Uh, now that has not fully happened uh, yet in the state, but it certainly is something that the feds and, and folks from the state can certainly say, hey, they can, if you don't have that participation rate, the law is written and says that yes, that could occur. Uh, you know, we certainly don't want to see any funds um, withheld, but most importantly, we, we really want to see how our kids are doing and be able to respond to their needs and uh, be able to really uh, meet their needs. And so our biggest piece is, is getting as many kids in as we can, but, but you're right, yes, that that is some conversation that is, is, is out there and, and that is something that could result if you don't have the participation rate that you need uh, per district. So, uh, we have also heard of other districts in the past who said, well, we're just all not going to take these tests. Everybody opt out. And, you know, the, the commissioner's office unfortunately had to say to some of those districts, that's really not an option. You do, you do need to participate. You, you know, you, try to, you need to try to get as many kids as you can in. So we're not there. Um, you know, we, we've, we've done a lot better than that, basically, so we want to try to keep us on the road of as many kids as possible participating, basically. It, for myself, being a former teacher, just the, the fact that they're not putting a time limit on it, that they have shown that they're willing to reduce mm -hmm. some of the stress, right. um, some of the, the longevity of the tests, some of the items that they're you know, making the kids do. Right. I mean, testing's been around forever. <laughs> it, it's the only way you can get your data. Yes. Last year, the opt-out rate throughout the county seemed to be quite high. How are you guys feeling this year? I, I think um, not only here, but across the whole state, um, that we'll be in a much better place. That, that's my hope, is that we'll have more opting in, a lot more opting in than we had opting out. So, you know, I wish I, would, I could say I had this crystal ball right across the whole state. I think. You may still have a couple people who say, hey, listen, you know, I don't want to uh, opt in, I want to opt out. But um, I think because of a lot of the changes that have occurred and how these tests are being used, um, and, and they're not being used in the way that they were, and because of the input and, and the direction that the state has gone in, I think we'll have a lot better opt-in. Our hope is that we will have a lot uh, more opting in uh, than what we've had in the past. I think that trend last year it really did send a message to Albany, and yeah. in response, I think they've done a pretty good job in trying to respond back to that. So okay. I think now it's time for our students to have been right. reciprocate back to the government, to the state, really. But you know, the other thing too is we have, um, you know, I know Joe. Uh, I I weekly walk through each of the buildings and get a chance to see classrooms and kids. I was just in all the schools yesterday and we got some teachers who were just doing some fantastic things with kids and kids who were just absolutely responding. I mean you can see work samples of where kids were a couple of years ago to where they're at now and you know for me what, what would be really great is to be able to not just use this test to confirm the hard work that we've done but you know everything that we've done. I, I, I think you know at the end of the year I think our, our kids are going to do great on whatever's, whatever exam is put in front of them because our teachers are great, our kids are good, and they're really working hard. And uh, you can see it um, every single day. So I think it'll just be a confirmation you know, of the great work we're doing. Last year, even with our opt-out rates, in many areas, we were still higher than, than most in the entire region. Not just the region, but the state. And others were coming in in some areas with 31 or 34 percent passing. We still had 50, 60 in some areas, and even higher on some of those exams. So, you know, it just confirms the great work that we're doing. So as, as many who opt in and, and do well, it just shows the great work and the progress we're making as a district. So, what other questions or concerns out there? Is it okay. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> Love me. <laughs> we talked to Adam time and you know, and it was a nice conversation and just reiterating the fact that it is only one measure and, and this this assessment, like many like other assessments, sometimes students uh, will struggle with the assessment itself or they'll struggle with assessments in general and just uh, underscoring the importance of using multiple measures and, and not taking one snapshot as the whole picture. So. Which I think Wayne does very well. Mm -hmm. I, I really do. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Any other thoughts or questions? Or? I know a couple, I think it was, it was a year ago for this year's budget, the test results from two years ago mm -hmm. helped us see a need and we were actually able to put into the budget additional help for kids mm -hmm. in the areas that were needed and if we don't know where it's needed, if we can't justify it, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's hard to, to make those additions. Mm -hmm. Well, nice to see the results this year from mm -hmm. them yeah. extra teachers that we did put in the resource teachers. Well, we have uh, an academic intervention specialist in math at the middle school who's able to pull small groups and push into classrooms, who's really able to look at weekly, um, work weekly with teachers, look at unit assessments and pull uh, kids out for targeted instruction based on standards that were assessed in the classroom that they struggled with. And for the first time in the high school, particularly because that algebra exam was so tough for our kids, I think uh, our mastery rate of saying we had maybe one or two kids meet mastery over the first couple of admittance each time. And that's just, we know our, our kids are, we have a lot of strong math, mathematically minded kids. And so having those two positions, for example, has been able to help the teachers to target the standards. Because remember, the standards are three, four, we're, we're rolling with four, four years into it, so we're starting to get better versed in what those standards mean, what they look like, how it, what's the expected performance level for the kids based on the expectation of the standards. So it's been good, it's been really good. But yes, you're right, we'll be able to see you know, yeah. how, how that has assisted and helped helped our kids as, as we get those results back, basically, so. Mm -hmm. Michelle or John, I don't know if you can add this more. How this year are we kind of motivating the kids to, have, to make it a different mindset in the classroom for these upcoming tests? To make, to make it a little bit more of a positive experience versus just testing the time. Is there any changes that are going on? No. I don't know that there's any overt changes. I, I will say this. Um, the adult environment is the kid is is the kid environment, and um, what I feel like was unfortunate in recent years is just the pressure that was uh, unfairly put on the adults, and particularly the teachers and the principals. And I think subconsciously, just lifting that off and let us focus on helping the kids. I think that environment translates. And I'm not saying I mean there was because it was. Last year was, was a special year. Yeah, it was. When teachers were under fire like never before. Mm -hmm. And I I think this has been a welcome change. It's allowing us to just focus on, on the kids. I know Michelle can probably I you know, I when I do it with my kids, I think every teacher is different and I just I don't it's a show what you know. This is not about you, it's about sure. us. It's I don't want to teach you something you already know. Um, so just do the best you can do. Uh, I think the the time limit um, will will help. Sure. It's mm -hmm. still it's if you quest our head. That's the new provide uh, testing. They'll officially take over, and those tests will actually change um, in a year or two. Okay. Well, they still have the teacher participation in them. In yes, the actually, they're doing more participating okay, cool. and, and, and reaching out to it and to get more teachers involved exactly. than than Pearson had done. So we've got a, you know, we're in a transitional period right now. In fact, I was just talking with Michelle this morning about uh, the state has sent out letters to each of the districts and asked for volunteers to come and help to create the test. And to look uh, at the standards and, and to exactly. realign standards. As, as we know that, you know, we, we pushed, when they, when they rolled them in, you know, some maybe a developmentally a little bit, um, not in the right spot. I do have one other question, not to get off the testing, but 
we're coming real close to uh, seeing your projects. How's that going? It's going very well. Very, very well. Extremely I'm excited. Well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yes. here. Well, no, culminating pieces as well. Kids are doing very well. and I think it's a great thing. Getting ready for it, so we're looking forward to it. They're, they're all out in the community, and we've had yes, a couple of presentations of our OE kids coming in. I think the biggest thing in answer to Carrie's question is it's not out there. You're not hearing the word opt out. You're not hearing it. It's very brought That's down. Good. It's diffused. It's, it's Fair down. Fairport settled down. Well, well there's, there's, still time, still, there's, still, there's still conversation. I don't want to say that it's not. It's but it's nothing like it was right. last year. I mean, it started in November last year with the, the, the forums. And, yeah, the forums. <coughs> You don't have the rallies and the, I think the governor heard loud and clear, and no politician is ever going to say, ooh, I made a mistake, but they will back off a little bit and slowly change their ways and listen. Um, so I think that has helped immensely, that it's just, because that's where the kids heard it, and that's where kids were almost pitted against each other. I didn't opt my kids out, but you did. Well, my, my mom, you know, is mean or, you know, I mean, it went back and forth. It was like, Mom, why are you doing this to me when Susie's mom isn't making her take it? And there was that with the kids. It was with the staff. It was with parents. It was, it was just a horrible, horrible experience last year. And you really couldn't put the blame anywhere because you could justify everybody's skin in the game for one reason or another. You could see their point, but it all has to be a culmination of everybody working together to fix the problem. It may not be fixed all the way, but we've gone a long way in just a year. Yeah, we have. You, you said it best. Yes, we, we truly have uh, come a long way. I mean, from where, we were, <laughs> from where we were a year ago, you know, it was really contentious. And, and I would say, you know, I don't think politically that things were done well. It, it just wasn't the right thing. Where we're at today is so much better. I mean, there's a lot more collaboration. There's a lot more input from others. Um, and it's really, we're, we're turning to, it's really kids are being tested with the right mindset, right? And, and we as educators are being allowed to do what we need to do, get information on how our kids are doing, and not use it in a way to hurt or harm other people, but really use it in a way to help meet the needs of our kids. So, I mean, it's, it's, we're so far from where we were a year ago. And I'm really excited about the path that we're on, and I'm, I'm excited about the work that we're doing, and just really looking forward to a real positive um, testing cycle that, that happens work that will occur this year. So, it's great. Really, really great. So, any other questions or thoughts? I know last year, um, when the scores came back. For people who didn't know what we do, I I had the opportunity to sit with Joe and he showed me my daughter's scores mm -hmm. and how they use it and to say, okay, well, she got this question wrong and this question goes with this standard, mm -hmm. so this is where she's struggling. And you could see the pattern of she was missing these questions that went with that standard. And it was just, I don't know if the parents realized how in depth that we look at the results and how we can use them. Because to me, seeing that then, just on the computer screen, that's pretty amazing to me that you can, they use that test to figure out exactly where my kids struggle. So now they're gonna target that area. So, but I would be curious as to how many parents don't really know how in-depth the scoring goes, how they break it down. And it's not, here's your score. Like, when I think of testing, okay, did I pass or did I fail? Not what I got wrong. So mm -hmm. maybe that's information we can try and get out to people, how in-depth we look into that, right? Well, the other thing is, too, is if you've got 18 kids in your class and 16 out of 18 miss that same question, then that goes back to the teacher to say, to her or him, geez, what did I miss? What did they not get that I thought they had or I didn't, you know? Or is there a gap in our program? Oh, right, and where do we need to get so that these kids get that? So it, it is not 
and like Michelle said, it is not on the kids as much as it is on the staff to say, I need to know that what I'm teaching you is, and you're getting it. Right. And, um, and I think sometimes the kids, you know, don't really get that. They look at, this is my performance, this is all on me. Yes, it is, but it's also on, on the staff to see where, the, where there might be a gap. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's a trick question. We've all seen that in the state test. Mm -hmm. And we've also seen, hopefully this year, you know, when the state testing first came out, they, um, you got your test back. You got to look at the questions and you got to compare it. I don't know if that's going to be allowed. We were able to use, use them as teaching tools for, for, for okay. staff. Right. We haven't heard yet. Right. Last year, yeah, we will. Last year, it was about 50% were released. Mm -hmm. This year, they are anticipating 60%. And then as they go forward, um, and part of the cutting back on that is expense. You know, if they don't release the questions, they can use them again. Right. And part of it is um, kind of trying to wean us off of so much test prep based on old exams, which was a common practice that, I mean, I'll tell you that as a principal, I engaged in it. So going forward, is if we move to the computer-based, they'll be, we're hopeful that they'll be able to, once again, they're hopeful, I should say, that they'll be able to release 100% of the questions over time. Now, also, just to kind of go with what Jennifer was talking about, so there is a, a uh, test report that parents can see from year to year. Uh, usually this is home with report cards or during parent-teacher conference days. You can use those reports to kind of indicate what standards kids are doing well and are not doing well in. And so um, that's certainly something that we'll continue to work with our staff on so that they can, con can continue to communicate that with all parents. But definitely during those parent-teacher conference days, those are good times to look at those reports from the previous year. So this year's report won't come until <laughs> close to next year. But once we get them, we'll be able to share that information with our parents too. But you're right, those are, they're great data pieces because they can show you exactly what standard that we need to work on and how we might need to intervene for any child at any time. So they're very useful, very helpful when we look at curriculum so, and instruction. Yeah. Yeah. I agree, agree. So uh, with that said, if there are no other questions, Again, we're looking forward to a very positive testing uh, cycle. And all the parents who are watching this, uh, we, we just really look forward to a great um, uh, outcome with them for our kids and our community. I want to make sure that I end today by saying thank you to everybody. You know, this year we have an opportunity to show and highlight the great work that we're doing with and for students. And I want to make sure that I say for everyone, no matter what happens on the exams, here's a couple of things I know. We have really great kids who are bright and very smart, and we have outstanding teachers. I believe that Wayne will, once again, exceed expectations on this year's exams. So I'm looking forward to a really positive 3-8 through eight testing season. Thank you again for your time and all of your efforts and support in advance.